You know, guidance is frequently likened to water in the Quran. And you know when you value water most? When you're thirstiest. And so you have people out there in this desert of confusion and purposelessness. And when they finally find the water of guidance, then it's the most precious thing in the world to them because they know what it's like to be thirsty. Now that guidance is through the fountain of the teachings of the Prophet On the day of judgment, the end of the race is his actual held, his actual fountain. And when you drink from his hand Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, your thirst is forever quenched. Remember in the narration where Anas anhu asked the Prophet Sallallahu where I should look for you, the Prophet Sallallahu told him three places. Look for me at the Mizan, look for me at the Sirat, and look for me at the Held. So the Held is the last place that the Prophet ﷺ told Anas anhu to look for him. This Held is essentially a huge lake and it has water pouring into it through two channels, both of which are flowing from Al Kawthar, which is the river in paradise. So the Kawthar is this great, tremendous river which the Prophet ﷺ will be granted in Jannah. And the Held comes from the Kawthar. So you're not quite in Jannah yet, but you have these two channels of water that are flowing down into this lake of the Prophet ﷺ. He described it Wasallam. He said that that lake is whiter than milk and it is sweeter than honey. And it has fragrance from the musk of paradise. And the two streams having their sources in Jannah one of them is from gold and the other one is from silver. So you have this beautiful fountain after just crossing. I mean, obviously the Silat. So you just cross the most frightening part of the day of judgment over hellfire and you saw what you saw and experienced what you experienced. And now there's just water, but it's a different type of water. And how big is it? The Prophet ﷺ, he said, like this place of mine, meaning like Medina to Amman or Ayla and Sham to Sana'a in Yemen. So he's describing it وسلم, as this huge, huge, huge fountain. And he said that it is so large that it would take a month's journey just to be able to cross it. And the Prophet وسلم, said, Man shariba minha fala yadma ba'daha abada, that whoever drinks from it is never going to be thirsty again. Now, what are some of the things that we have to avoid to not be barred from the held of the Prophet? وسلم? There's one primary thing. And that is the hadith where the Prophet ﷺ mentioned that some of my companions will come to me at my help and I will recognize them. I know their names, but then suddenly a barrier will be erected and they'll be taken away from me. And I'll be saying, Ashabi, Ashabi, my companions, my companions. And the angels will say to me, لا تدري ما أحدثوا بعدك. You don't know what they innovated after you. And in one narration, what they changed after you. And so this is referring to innovation. And obviously, you know, some of the ulama refer to the direct time of the Prophet وسلم, where some of the people apostated after he passed away Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But overall, if you want to drink from the fountain of the Prophet وسلم, then you have to follow his teachings. And so you can't reject his sunnah here and then not expect to be rejected from his held on the day of judgment. Now, after that, you have the order of arrivals to the held. And there is a very similar trend with all of those. And there's a story actually here where Abu Salam al-Habashi, rahimahullah ta'ala, he says that Umar ibn Abdul Aziz, rahimahullah, when he was the Khalifa, he summoned me. So he said that I quickly went to him on a mule. And when I got to him, I said to him, Ya Amir al-Mu'mineen, this was a difficult ride. You know, this was a hard, troublesome way for me to get to you. And Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu apologized to him and he said, Ya Abu Salam, it's not that I wanted to trouble you, but there's a hadith that you narrated from Thoban radiallahu anhu, from the Prophet وسلم, about the help. And I wanted to hear it from you directly. So Abu Salam said, Thoban narrated to me from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that my help is as large as from Adan to Amman. Its water is whiter than milk and sweeter than honey. Its cups are as numerous as the stars. Whoever drinks one sip of it will never be thirsty after that again. And he said, the first people to arrive at my help are the poor of the Muhajireen who had disheveled hair, dirty clothes, 
and they were people who would be turned away by those of high status for marriage and people would not open their doors for them. But SubhanAllah, here they are now and they're the first to the held of the Prophet And Umar anhu said, but I married a woman of prestige and the doors are open for me. I married Fatima bint Abdul Malik anha and I, you know, I'm, I'm living a good life. So he said, I shall certainly not wash my hair until it is disheveled, nor will I wash my garments, which touches my body until it becomes dirty. And of course, Umar ibn Abdul Aziz is talking about that fear of being excluded from that batch. But this isn't about the clothes. It's not about the appearance. It's about the station, the state that a person is actually in. And so the first to be honored this way on the day of judgment are the humble amongst the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu and amongst this Ummah, who are mostly the downtrodden and the poor. And of course, the Prophet Sallallahu used to say, Ibghuni fi al find me amongst the downtrodden. And he was referring to this world. And so the downtrodden are first class on that day. They get to take the expedited line to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam because they were usually excluded in this life. Now, the opposite of that, are those who used to actually aid the tyrants. So you have those that were turned away from the powerful, and then you have those that would aid the powerful that were doing all sorts of harm. So Ka'b radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he narrates this incident where he says, Rasulullah came out to us and we were nine people. And five of us were Arabs and four of us were non-Arabs, meaning we were a diverse group of people. And the Prophet said, listen, have you heard that after me there are going to be these tyrants? And he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, whoever enters upon them, فَصَدَّقَهُمْ بِكَذِبِهِمْ وَأَعَانَهُمْ عَلَى ظُلْمِهِمْ فَلَيْسَ مِنِّي وَلَسْتُ مِنْهُمْ Whoever enters upon them and condones their lies and supports them in their oppression, then he is not from me and I am not from him. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, and he shall not drink from my help. This is not a person who's going to deserve to drink from my help. And whoever does not enter upon them and does not help them in their oppression, and does not condone their lies, then he is from me and I am from him and he shall drink with me at the help. So you can't support a tyrant for privilege and then expect to be blessed with a drink from the hand of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It doesn't work that way. And there's another narration which is also along the same lines. If you're noticing the idea of the humble versus the tyrants who used power to get ahead. Usaid ibn Hudayr radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he said that there was a man from the Ansar who came to the Prophet Sallallahu and he asked for a position of power. He asked for a position of leadership. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam responded and he said, listen, إِنَّكُمْ سَتَلْقَوْنَ بَعْدِ أَثَرَ فَاصْبِرُوا حَتَّى تَلْقَوْنِ عَلَى الْحَوْلِ He said Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that after me, you're going to encounter selfishness and preferential treatment. So be patient until you meet me at the help. Meaning don't try to expedite this position of privilege. It'll come and the greatest privilege is that time. So the Prophet ﷺ is consoling people who remain steadfast on his sunnah, that's number one. And then he's consoling those who stayed humble and he's consoling those that longed for that moment more than any privilege that this world ever had to offer. And to be ahead of the line, to drink from the hand of the Prophet ﷺ, I mean, what's greater than that? And so at this point, you're with your Prophet ﷺ. You're drinking from the water of paradise. You can smell it. And now you're just anticipating that final entrance.